Hi, this is part five in the AC Basics tutorial series. Last time we took a look at resistors, inductors and capacitors uh, alone in circuit. What we're going to look at briefly this time is what's called time domain versus frequency domain. And you might be used to this. Time domain is your basic oscilloscope with your waveforms and whatnot. And your frequency domain is frequency domain analysis. Because your oscilloscope, for example, is a time domain instrument. You view waveforms on it. it you get like an instantaneous value over uh, time on your oscilloscope as that waveform sweeps across. Or at least it used to on your old school analog oscilloscope that sweep would go across and your wave and it would draw the waveform at each moment in time that instantaneous value whereas your spectrum analyzer would operate in the frequency domain where you would have a frequency on uh, the x axis versus and versus amplitude and this is the, not quite the same thing but kind of sort of when it comes to AC circuit analysis, a time domain and frequency domain are just two different ways of looking at and analyzing uh, your AC circuits. In this particular case, we've got LC and R in here, so we've got uh, just all, all in series with an AC generator here. So this is a time domain and this is a frequency domain circuit and analysis. And there's a pros and cons with both approaches. Similar to how your oscilloscope works, think of uh, time domain AC circuit analysis as uh, working on uh, instantaneous values and uh, so you can use these on uh, circuits that are trans you know uh, transient circuits uh, for example you'll see that in the time domain uh, the circuit elements are represented as their actual uh, LC and R values so ohm resistance in ohms inductance in mil uh, Henry's and capacitance in Farad here and then you've got your current flowing through that Whereas frequency domain over here, we've moved over to a more a phaser representation instead of an instantaneous value representation. In this case, we're dealing with a phaser representation. So we've got the angle. So we've got the magnitude and the angle here. Uh, we have an instantaneous value. We saw this in the previous video. Uh, the instantaneous value, which is a small v, equals uh, v max, which is the peak uh, voltage of your waveform, uh, sine omega t. Now, an omega, of course, uh, is lowercase uh, Greek letter omega, and that uh, means 2 pi f. And the units for that are in radians per second, which is not an angular velocity, it's an actually an angular frequency in AC circuit analysis, as opposed to maths, which you might be, you might call it angular velocity, but that's not the case here. So in frequency domain analysis over here, we use, instead of using the instantaneous representation, these two circuits are identical. So uh, this 141 sine 500 T, which is 500 radians uh, per second, um, this is going to translate over to 100 angle zero over here, and then the radians per second uh, will then translate into these values uh, here when we look at the L's and the C's. But uh, basically this is a phaser representation in polar form. So uh, of course Vmax is the peak voltage if it's, uh, if it's 141 volts and you multiply that by 0.707 from peak to RMS and you're dealing with an RMS value here. Hence why this is useful for steady state fixed frequency stuff. And in steady state um, you can simply work in like RMS values. And because of that, uh, we're no longer talking in terms of uh, Farad's and Henry's here. We're talking in terms of uh, capacitive reactants and inductive reactants that we looked at in the previous video. So that's a complex form. So minus J 100 ohms is equivalent to 20 microfarads at, at um, the particular radians uh, per second that we're dealing with here. And likewise, the inductive uh, reactants over here is uh, positive J25 ohms. Remember from the previous video, reactance is in ohms. So uh, yeah, basically we're just dealing with um, different um, ohm values in the circuit. We're here, we're actually dealing with the actual capacitors and resistors. So if you're just dealing with one frequency, say you're dealing with a main circuit or something like that, or some other fixed frequency circuit, then it's going to make your job a lot simpler to convert uh, your circuit and your calculations and do them all in the frequency uh, domain over here. In the, in the case of one frequency, well, the frequency domain, like a spectrum analyzer, would be across all frequencies. In this particular case, you'd only be dealing with one frequency. Makes it real simple. 
So the forms that you're going to be using, and we won't go into de you know, mathematical detail of all this uh, kind of stuff. It's out of the scope of this video. But it's basically uh, voltage as a function of uh, frequency here. And then over here, you've got an instantaneous voltage as a function of time. Hence, time domain versus frequency domain. So converting between a time domain and frequency domain is really easy. We just use uh, the reactance formulas that we had in the previous, uh, that we looked at in the previous video. Now, of course, ohms is going to stay the same because it's a linear component that doesn't, uh, that isn't affected by uh, frequency. So our 10 ohms simply becomes 10 ohms over here. Nothing changes. But our 20 microfarad capacitor, remember our uh, capacitive reactance uh, formula here is minus J1 on on omega C and omega in this particular case is 500 radians per uh, second. I've just picked that value because it comes out uh, to a nice value down here anyway. So that's minus J 1 over 500 times 20 microfarads here um, which gives us a value of minus J 100 ohms. Just plug that into your confuser and do it yourself. So we write minus J 100 ohms there, and so we've got the complex representation of our 20 microfarads at the one particular frequency, which is uh, 2 pi F in radians per second is 500 here. So what is that uh, frequency? Get your confuser out again, and 500 uh, radians per second divided by uh, 2, so 500 radians per second divided by uh, 2 times pi, and that's going to give you a value of uh, 79.57 hertz. So that's just the frequency that we're dealing with here. Nothing special about it, just gives a nice round value there. And likewise for our 50 millihenry inductor here, remember our inductive uh, reactance formula, um, XL equals J omega L, it's positive uh, J this time. Um, so that's just 500, which is our radian uh, angular, our omega uh, radians per second value there, times 50 millihenries, that gives us our J 25 ohms. So we write that in our polar form there, J 25 ohms instead of 50 millihenries. So how do we solve for the current flowing in this circuit? Well, it's a series circuit, so it's just the voltage divided by the total resistance here, or because we're dealing in terms of uh, complex um, reactances here, total impedance. And we'll do impedance versus reactance in a uh, future video, but to briefly explain the difference here, uh, impedance, which uh, is denoted by Z, so we're gonna talk impedance uh, down here. Impedance is basically reactance plus resistance. So the total reactance here plus the resistance is the impedance. That's the difference between impedance and reactance. Reactance is just uh, the inductive component or the capacitive component on its own with no resistive element in it. But because we're dealing with an entire circuit, we're talking about the whole circuit impedance. So it's the circuit voltage, which is 100 volts with an angle of zero because we've deemed it so. Um, <laughs> you've got to have a reference somewhere, so make it easy for yourself, reference uh, angle zero. And we've got the resistance of 10 ohms plus uh, the impedance here. And very handily, as we've looked at our complex number video, when you want to add uh, complex impedances, uh, reactances like this, then it's better to have them in the uh, rectangular form J, like this, rather than in the polar angular form like this. So you just add them up. So our total impedance is our resistance plus our inductive um, reactance plus our capacitive reactance XC, and we've got them in conveniently uh, rectangular form, so we just add them up. 10 plus J25 minus J100, because there's a minus in there, because it's a capacitor. So um, that's 10 minus J75, and the unit of impedance uh, is in ohms. So our total impedance for that circuit is 10 minus J75 ohms. So our circuit current flowing through is just V on R, or v voltage divided by uh, the impedance. Um, so I equals voltage divided by uh, the imp total impedance here. And we've got these in polar form. Remember from our complex number video, when you want to divide numbers, it's easier to have them in uh, uh, polar form like this than it is to have in rectangular form like this. So what I've done is use my confuser here, which has, uh, that's what those R to P and 
and P to R buttons on your calculator do. I'll put that up here, a screenshot up here. You can see that that's what they do, polar to rectangular. Watch my complex number video for that. Um, so I've converted uh, this rectangular form, 10 minus J75, into its polar form, which is uh, 75.66 magnitude and minus 82.4 phase, like that. And so you simply divide two uh, polar um, complex numbers like that. So it's 100 divided by 70, so the real component, 100 divided by 75.66 is 1.32 amps. That's what's the uh, value of current that's flowing in the circuit. And then the complex part, when you're doing a division, you just subtract them. So zero minus minus 82 gives you positive 82.4. So uh, the current flowing in the circuit is 1.32 amps with a phase of 82.4 degrees. Beauty. So a polar diagram is just a phaser like that of uh, the 1.32 amps as the magnitude and the phase angle is positive 82.4 degrees like that. Bingo, we've solved our, uh, for the current in the circuit. So how do you solve that in the time domain? Well, you could get complex and depends on the uh, time that you wanna solve it at, but we're talking about a steady state current. And when you're talking about a steady state current in a uh, circuit, even if it's AC, steady state, um, you want it in polar form like this so that you can actually calculate the impedance. So you don't know the current that's flowing through here without converting the capacitor into an impedance and without converting the inductor into impedance or into a reactance um, and then calculating the total current. So we used our frequency domain for that. So um, there's a lot more complexity that goes into all this, but it, it's just important to know that there are two different ways to look at an AC circuit, the time domain and the frequency domain. So mathematically, you could go down the rabbit hole chasing a red herring until the cows come home with this sort of stuff. But yeah, it's just important uh, to know that there's two different types of things. So if you want to do steady state stuff, this is the ticket. If you want to do any uh, sort of transient uh, or instantaneous value stuff, time domain is the way to do it. So I hope you found that video useful. If you did, please give it a big thumbs up. And as always, you can discuss down below in the comments or over on the EEV blog forum where it's all happening and I've got a new uh, merch range available on TeePublic. I'll link that in down below. T-shirts, mugs, hats, stickers, all sorts of stuff with some new designs out there. So check it out. Catch you next time.